What's going on everybody? Welcome back, Justin here. Today we're gonna be talking about the 2018 movie, The Farm. This movie wasn't on my radar. I didn't plan to review it. I had no idea this movie existed. I stumbled across it on Tubi uh, by way of a suggested video on YouTube. I just saw it and I was flabbergasted. I'm, I was confused. I was shocked. I was disgusted. All of the above. And after watching it, I knew I had to talk about it. So here we are today. Now this movie starts out in a pretty unassuming, pretty generic, pretty bland, cliche way. Nora and Alec, a couple are heading somewhere. It's a very classic setup, a setup we've seen a million times before. A couple people driving across country, they come across a small uh, podunk town, they stop at a diner, they need somewhere to stay. Someone suggests, hey, why don't you go down to this place? My buddy's got a place you can catch a room down there. A little bed and breakfast that they can stay out. It's quaint, it's beautiful, it's cute. And they decide to stay there for the night. We've seen this many times before. But when this movie takes a dive into what we haven't seen before, at least that I haven't seen before, is when they are uh, <laughs> um, abducted, caged, and turned into what is essentially farm animals. When they arrive at the bed and breakfast, they're greeted by, of course, this creepy guy who looks odd. He has some unique facial deformities that make him, I guess, for the movie's sake, inherently creepy. So they lay down to go to bed and they wake up in kennels. Now, this movie was directed by Hans Stjern's word. Obviously, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I could not find out any information about this guy. I did a Google search and you can find a couple projects that he's been involved with, including one that had the PETA name in the thumbnail. So uh, we'll get to that in a second, but very little is known about this guy. It's his only feature film from what is now almost four years ago. And after watching this movie, what happens to the characters in this movie, I'm pretty sure that this guy is most likely a hardcore vegan, which actually serves the movie well, because he really wants to punish these people. I, I'm assuming for eating a burger at that diner. And they saw him chomping down on this burger and it seemed to be enjoying it a lot. I think the farm is definitely his response to the unethical treatment of animals by unethically treating humans uh, in the most despicable ways possible. These people in this movie are treated like literal farm animals. Everything is represented in this movie as it would be in a normal farm. We have our we have our dairy cows, we have our beef cows, we have all of the different areas of the farm, but uh, these are humans. So you can think of what the dairy farm might be if it was a human, okay? Think of what, think of what that might be. They've basically collected travelers and out-of-towners and turned them into farm animals for food. And they have a team of people preparing meals of people to serve to people. It's a cannibal movie. All right, if you haven't figured that out already. Now, what sets this movie apart from other films who might really go for it with a disturbing concept or just really out there premises? How well this movie is directed. The cinematography, the shots, it's actually really visually interesting to look at. The gore effects, the practical effects are actually really well done, a couple of them really disturbing. They definitely don't hold anything back as far as the disturbing uh, content of this movie, which is what stood out to me so much. It's rather shocking the way uh, the movie treats its human characters as in this director's opinion, as we treat animals. To anybody who has ever seen one of the gnarly undercover PETA videos on YouTube, I don't encourage you to watch them, but if you've seen them, they're really, really nasty. Now, as I said, as far as this movie looks, as far as the shots are composed, the cinematography, that all looks great. It's when you get to the, uh, the narrative, the story, and some of the performances where the movie's shortcomings can really be seen sort of glaringly at points, but that's really not what you're here for. You're here for the fucked up shit that happens to all these people as they or turn into human farm animals. And the final shot, this sort of zoom out shot that the movie ends on is something that I've never seen before. In fact, I rewound it probably two or three times just to watch it because the combination of what you're seeing on screen with the music is super eerie. It's really well done and it's just super, super creepy. Just to let people know, I don't usually do trigger warnings on my videos, but there is a pretty disturbing scene of violence against a newborn child. Uh, for those of you who've seen Serbian film, this is going to be nothing to you. But if you're not into that, there is a one really quick brief scene of violence towards a a little baby, so I just want to say that out there in case somebody doesn't want to see that. Once the movie starts and our main characters sort of wake up in their kennels, their characters sort of go in the back burner and we really sort of just start following the employees of this farm and seeing how it operates. Uh, only sporadically do they go back to our main characters, which I think hurt the movie a little bit. I think you should have really followed our main characters as a, as a through line, somebody to sort of follow the movie through. I think it would have given the movie a little bit more forward uh, momentum. Also, one glaring thing Thing that I noticed is two specific characters. I felt like the actors they chose for these two roles should have been switched. They have the leader of the farm, which is this sort of 
gnarly guy with this weird sort of deformed face. And then they have a character that they have in a lot of movies like this, which is very cliche, where they have like a 40 year old guy with the mental capacity of like a child. They always have these in these type of movies, I feel like. The actor that they chose for the man child is like a really clean cut, normal looking guy. So when he tries to act like a little kid, it really shines through. If they would have chose the, the actor who leads the farm and they swapped roles, I think this movie would have been a lot better. The, the actor that they chose who like sort of is the head of the farm there kind of reminds me of Richard Brake. I think if they would have had him play the like sort of like mentally incapacitated man child, that part would have been much, much better because you can really see through this guy's performance. He's trying to act, you know, like uh, sort of mentally challenged and it just doesn't work for me and they tried to make the other character the leader of the farm with like the deformity like a really stern like mean guy and I just wasn't buying it as far as that that's just a nitpick for gore hounds you're gonna have tons of gore you're gonna have dismemberments disemboweling uh, all kinds of crazy violent shit going on to these people the things that somebody would come to watch this movie for are all there above all just a bizarre premise that I haven't quite seen done like this uh, so if you're in the mood for a super bizarre, super disturbing, weird, gory, uh, sort of oddity of a film. The Farm from 2018, I think, will, will do you well. You can watch this on Tubi right now for free. Tubi, of course, is a great outlet for free horror movies. In fact, I just watched Wolf Creek for the first time on Tubi, as well as The Collector for the first time. So definitely check this movie out on Tubi. If you have seen The Farm, let me know your thoughts. I'm sure you have thoughts on this if you've seen it. Uh, but guys, I think we're done here, guys. Stay weird. Remember to always be your Yourself, eat your veggies, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.